haven't done this in a while because I've been busy writing the second chapter of the nature of software. I keep writing and it keeps getting longer. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a well, big-ish, probably about 4,000 words, but it was at 3,600 right now. I think I'm close to done, but there was an element that kind of just, uh, I was like, you know, do the wrap up paragraph and then it's like, oh yeah, there's this entire other dimension of stuff that I actually kind of want to address. Yeah, no, I mean, I was thinking like the, the pieces of uh, the property, I should say, of, of said 15 properties, cause I'm doing all 15 properties in order is strong centers and in the nature of order the strong centers pattern not pattern it's a property slash transformation is pretty short um it doesn't have a lot to say other than centers are important and when you put them together uh, there's a field effect. So, and I mean, a center is, according to Alexander, a center is just like a, it's, you know, minimum viable thing. And so they're recursive. Centers are made out of centers and centers make up other centers. And so centers are strengthened and made more prominent by being juxtaposed sort of made out of have so the more the more center of centers is basically what you get sort of like when you think of uh, buildings that have characteristics like I mean the Hagia Sophia for example with the minarets going around it and then the dome in the middle that kind of thing but when you're trying to apply that to software like what, you know, what do you have to work with? And what has been really, I mean, eye-opening to the extent that it's sort of, you know, causing me to actually write down the, and articulate some stuff that was sort of tacit before. Just the sort of notion that the that in software you know like everything can be a center like the classes can be centers and the files can be centers and the you know the functions and the methods or whatever you want to call them variables can be centers you know all of this stuff they all of these things can be centers and, and uh so it's kind of like well, what does it mean like what is the equivalent of you know the Hagia Sophia and the minarets like what is that what is the you know the analog in software and so you know thinking that out has sort of that's the thing that's like tacked on another thousand words under this at least the conclusions that I came to is that we probably really should be spending way more effort, way, way more effort in analyzing and like visualizing the topology of the code that we write. Like we have, cause we've got inheritance graphs, we've got dependency graphs. Those are two separate things. And then we've got call graphs, but in order to have a call graph coverage on the call graph, then you need your unit tests and you know, and it just sort of snowballs uh, from there. And so you could almost say, well, you know, the basis, for instance, for unit test, or you know, the reason why we want coverage on our unit tests is so that we can draw the picture of the call graph. You know, but yeah. Anyway, I am gonna finish my coffee.